Hey, good morning. It's uh, 10 25, 2013. This is Mayhem News Live Smackdown Friday. And this is your host, T Mib Lives, or Russell if you prefer. Um, for some reason, my DVR did not record Smackdown. So, um, technical difficulties are always possible, but um, I did find some enough footage. You know, I could review it, see what happened. Uh, seemed like it was a pretty decent show. Uh, if you hadn't figured out, we we're changing everything up. Um, Tuesdays we've got Impact Tuesdays, Mayhem News Live Impact Tuesdays. Fridays we got uh, Mayhem News Live Smackdown Fridays. Um, and you know we're going to talk about Smackdown on Fridays, and uh, I'm going to do some stuff live, but you know it just depends on how the show looks, the previews of the show. And then I cover Raw on Tuesday after the show, so, um, you know, we're going to do our headlines on there, too, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get into this. Uh, Michael Cole opens up the show with Triple H. Uh, apparently, it was an exclusive interview, I guess, because they want to put exclusive up there, you know. Um, basically, interviews Triple H, and he, Triple H blames the actions of the big show for Stephanie McMahon having to fire six WWE employees uh, I guess because they let him in the building I, I don't know played his music I don't know it just is I don't know it was kind of hush hush you know, they didn't really say anything of course you know it's probably it's part of the storyline obviously uh, you know and he was basically saying that it was this he started talking about other things and you know he said basically that um, you know he was gonna uh, watch uh Randy Orton, you know, pretty much beat Daniel Bryan, and that's when Daniel Bryan decided to say, hey, um, yeah, I've got something to say about that. So he basically come down and uh, tells him that uh, in Hell in the Cell, not only is he going to prove Triple H wrong, but he's going to walk out the WWE champion. So we'll see. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to get the pay-per-view. Um... I got the last one. I kind of want to get it because Goldust and them are going to be in it. But, you know, I can't get every one. And uh, I got pick and choose. And, you know, I got I got the one. The only reason I got Battleground is because Goldust and them were there. It was their, his first pay-per-view since for coming back. And it, it was up to their jobs and their dad's jobs. So that was important. But um, I hadn't really given any, anything that, you know, it's a PG show, so you're not going to see hardly anything what you would have seen in Hell in the Cell before. So, you know. Uh, going on during the show, um, Usos defeat Harper and Rowan of uh, the Wyatts. And um, basically, when Wyatt, Bray Wyatt seems like he's going to interfere. Uh, oops. Accidentally bumped the camera there. Sorry about that. Uh, Bray Wyatt looks like he's going to interfere. Uh, Miz puts a boot in his face. Um uh, this distracts Rowan, which allows the Usos to hit the double uh, sidekick on uh, Harper for the win. Uh, AJ defeated Nikki Bella with the Black Widow while um, Tamina was outside beating the hell out of uh, Nick. You know, Bree. Uh, you know, it, WWE half-assing the Divas matches again. And, and I really hate to say it, and I've got a little more respect for the Bellas, but it seems when they're the focus of what's going on, WWE kind of half-ass, you know? I don't understand why or what's going on with that, but anyway. You know, it just seems it's when the Bellas are part of the focal point is when the matches are kind of... And I really don't blame that on them. I blame it on WWE, but... You know, um, and Miz pays for his little boot to Bray Wyatt. Um, he gets pretty much demolished backstage. Um, he's handcuffed to a thing. And he's got a liar written across his chest. Um, pretty strong, strong statement there. Um, Los Benadores defeats Slater and McIntyre. And it, it, again, we go through this week after week after week. Uh, three MB members who, in their cells, are actually good wrestlers. In their cells, you know, have plenty of star potential. He's Slater, everybody. I'm not just talking about McIntyre and, you know, Jamal. I'm talking about, you know, 
I'm talking about all of them, all three. But it seems that they just, they're being thrown to the wolves, for, you know, again, for a new team. And I don't understand, you know, I mean, if anybody, if you'd been in any other business with a losing record like they have, they'd already been gone. So it's obvious that if they're, they're not just actually losing, it's part of the show, you know. So I don't understand. Uh, Heyman and Ryback uh, take out, take on some fake CM Punk to prove a point. I'm kind of glad I missed that part. Um, but uh, more, I mean, from what I understand, whoops, from what I understand, WWE creative or WWE is is not happy with Ryback. Uh, apparently, there have been some reports that. When he is representing the company at appearances, that he really acts like he really doesn't want to be there. That um, uh, some of the things I read that basically, you know, they expected him to develop more in the ring than he has. Um, and I'll, I'll be frankly honest, other than his finishing move, when you're taking somebody else's uh, move set, which He's pretty much using Goldberg's move set, pretty much. You know, I, I, I just, you can't really act that, you know, impressed. You know, he needs to come up with something on his own. Um, but moving on, I, from what I understand, though, that's that's it. They're not very happy, and don't be surprised if Ryback don't get set on the side while Heyman and them move on, because obviously. Other than CM Punk here, if you're get, if you're getting put with Heyman, you're either crappy on the mic, or they're not very happy with you, and they're using Heyman, who is is miraculous at bringing heat to someone. Now he couldn't do this with CM Punk because CM Punk was already good at what he was doing, so they actually put them together because you know it was meant to be. But there are some there are some people that have gotten put with Heyman, uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, Ryback can actually do a promo. I, I really don't understand. I guess maybe his personality. I don't know. And Curtis Axel, even though he's the son of Mister Perfect, uh, it's, it's kind of lackluster. I mean, in his promo skills and yeah. now wrestling skills, he's pretty much okay, but. His promo skills are, so I, I, you know, basically that's that part. I just think that, you know, they're not very happy with Ryback right now. Uh, Kali takes on Fandango it was a no contest, but we did get to see some heat between Natalia and Summer. Uh, anytime you get to see Natalia on TV, hey. Um, and for the final match of that show. Um, Orton teamed up with all three members of the Shield, uh, and they were supposed to face Miz, Brian, uh, and the tag champions, Colt Goldust and Cody Rhodes. Uh, but with Miz, you know, being injured, uh, Big E basically convinces Vicky Guerrero to, you know, hey, I'm I'm here. It's good that Big E's getting a push, and thank God they're making him a face. Because nobody really liked him as a, you know, to me, I didn't. Uh, maybe it was because he, he was kind of bitching to AJ and, you know, being a bitch for AJ and Ziggler, which I, I like Ziggler, but I didn't like him when he was the Nate with AJ. But anyway, um, and Orton and the Shield blues, uh, uh, basically because <laughs> um, the other team was actually just better. Um Basically, Orton had the upper hand on Brian, and um, he goes for the. Uh, basically, Big E gets up, engages Orton, and sends him flying into one of uh, Brian's running knees, which gives uh, Brian the chance to pin him. Uh, there was a lot of high flying stuff in that match. Goldust, Cody, both were all over the place. Um, I just like their push. I, I like. I like where they're going. You know. And, um, I don't know who you are. Anyway, um, I just like where they're going with this man. I, I like where they're going. So, with the gold dust and Cody thing, I, I like. Um, like I said, uh, Seth says hello. And, okay, they heard you now. You, shh. 
<laughs> anyway, um, I like where it's going. Uh, I didn't put my predictions out. Uh, Dean Ambrose is going to cause a DQ. Uh, basically, the match will be thrown out at the pay per view, which will give the Usos a shot at Goldust and Cody, and which is what I think should have happened in the first place. Um, you know, um, the Shield was beat enough uh, as tag champions to to have lost their ability to you know rematch with a triple threat. But anyway. Um, as always, we like to mention our sponsors. We don't miss them as much, as much a detail as on the two new shows because they're so small. They're only a little over 10 minutes long, which we're pushing 11 minutes now. So, um, check out Zach Pack Promotions. Uh, you can find all their stuff on ZachPackPromotions.com. The stuff about busting for autism. It's November the 16th and the 17th. Uh, huge wrestling and star package people are going to be there all over the place uh now Goldust will not be there and neither will um the patterson the um one lady is not going to be there they've replaced her with joyce to win which is cool i watched three against company yeah i just told my age but anyway and uh fight disability uh slurs dot wordpress dot com we're trying to fight for disability slurs as always i thank throttle for the um use of our theme song I appreciate them uh, they do have a new album coming out Razor Wire Finish Line and it will be out soon uh, probably first on iTunes and Amazon they do have some CDs but I think they're going to do most of those their appearances right now and as always I'd like to give a shout out to Blast 52 and also a Call of Duty clan all female great bunch of ladies um, at uh, Girls with Big Guns uh, you can find them under our affiliate on our page that's mayhem-news.com that's mayhem-news.com and uh, just for uh, thanks to Chance Prophet for telling us about uh, Gabe Lyall uh, he's fighting childhood cancer and all we want is prayers I'm not going to give you any kind of web address they, they got enough going on they don't need 40,000 emails I uh, wish I had that many people watching the show Maybe that's just wishful thinking, but um, I appreciate everyone that watches the show. I appreciate all the likes and all the people, things that people say. Uh, we'll get this show posted as soon as possible. We will be back here Tuesday by 5 o'clock where we will have our main headline show for that week. And we'll talk about what happens on Raw and also what happens on the pay-per-view. I will not be getting the pay-per-view, so I will be like you watching what happens on Twitter so um, if you want to follow us here, that's at Mayhem News Live or at Mayhem News. You can also follow me. That is T-M-I-B-L-I-B-E-S, all caps, at, that's uh, on Twitter. So um, you can also catch us on feed. Uh, I usually post those links on the Twitter page, so um, I'm not going to give you no long feed uh, thing. So, uh, all right, I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to get a, uh, Throttle to take us out and finish us up. I thank you. Uh, God bless. I want to send out a shout out also to Boogie2988 and another good friend, um, Second String for Life. Uh, uh, no, no, oh, Mid Card for Life. Shoot, man, I missed up your name. But I want to give them a shout out. Follow their videos on uh, YouTube. And um, then, Man in Black, this has been Mayhem News Live Smackdown Fridays. Take us out.